Today, we are gonna deep dive into techno, especially techno trance. I was listening to the latest remix album from Charlotte David. It was a quite inspiring track, so I wanted to do really deep dive into her style because I receive a lot of questions about her and her style and my idea was do a start to finish video and go really into the details and for this start to end project we are going to do a rumble low end rumble kick rumble bass with a lot of artifacts in it and then we are going to do driving high end with the hi hats and the 16 percussions and so on. So that will be the second part. And the third part will be mostly layering up the rest of the synthesizer and instruments, getting that kind of distorted acid sound and trancy chords and concluding the track. I will use Ableton Live 10 for this video and I am going to use most of the stock plugins and I will just use pigments for the scene part most of the time but you can actually follow my steps in any DAW and create the similar sound. I am going to try a new edit hopefully this will make it easier for you to follow the each step without getting distracted too much. Let me know if you like the new edit on the comment below but I will stop talking now and start Ableton Live 10 and do some Charlotte David techno. For the rumble kicks and rumble bass, I really like to separate my kick because that means that I can use actually different layers to create my artifacts and that will also help me to make the track more coherent. So I will start by just introducing my sub kick and let me tell you why this sub kick works. Simply because if you take a look at the waveform, it's quite fat, so it, you will hear the low end quite a bit. But at the beginning, it's kind of empty, so that part will be the part that will be filling the distorted body of the kick. So once we play this... The only thing that I'm really caring here is just adding an EQ and cutting those high ends. Make sure that I'm only getting the this super subby part. And the probably most important part of this kick is that picking this distorted kick sound. So I have this guy over here, the body, like this. The only thing that I'm considering now, making a bit slightly more present by boosting a bit the high frequencies. And cutting super low so that I don't need to interfere with my sob. And then cutting also a bit super highs because I'm going to introduce also transient kick on top. And I will conclude it, this one by saturating a little bit more. And mix it with my sub now. only part that is missing is that click of the kick, super short click, and we will conclude the kick part by introducing a click. I will saturate it a bit because I feel like we could use a bit more harmonics there. I'm going to overdrive because this gives a bit more harmonics. And then mix it. Here we go, we have the kick. And I think there are other things that we can do from this kick. We can almost create whole low end from this kick. First thing that I like to do, that most of the time you will have the sub continuously in each kick hit until the next kick hits. In this case, we see that this part is empty and we have to fill this part. What I like to do is actually take the sub, the same sub, and volume it down. You should be literally see the difference on these two because if you do it all the way up all the time it will not be enough for the kick to breathe and it will actually lead your kick to sound weaker so you want this part a bit empty so what i'm going to do the beginning part is not loud enough i'm going to take this part and volume up and down and probably start where this sub ends more or less something like this and let's try. 
Volume it down, mix it. The thing that I like to do actually, not just copy paste this everywhere, slightly ever change it so that we have a slight groove to this low end as well. So what you can do, what I like to do, I just copy paste like this, right? And then move this guy a little bit and then move them on top of each other a little bit. Probably moving this guy is a bit better idea. Just like that. And maybe start from here. And then let's copy paste this. Now we have much more authentic low end, especially the sub end, and this will more or less carry the track for us. So what you can do here to follow up, do exactly the same structure, but use different kick, different sub, and try to come up with a different maybe groove, and try to build your own sub end of your track. And the second part is doing similar thing, but this time we are going to use the body of the kick and try to fill the mid end a little bit and give it a bit groove on top of that. I'm going to create a new channel duplicate my kick body. I want to have something like this dum da dum da dum dum dum. So it almost like a horse riding if that makes sense. Of course it doesn't but yeah, something like that. If you keep it the initial attack it's easier to come up with the groove because then you know exactly where it hits. So we can actually do that. So maybe try something like this. Something like this. Now we can start playing around a little bit. Maybe volume down also a little bit. Good. Let's move around this guy. We can delete this. I think this works quite nice. Now we can move to the effects and make it a bit smoother and passing to the track. I want to start cleaning up the low end. Cleaning up the high end. Want to add a frequency shifter so that I can play around with the frequencies. So that it sounds slightly different. Saturate a bit. EQ one more time. Now we have this kind of nice groove going on on the background. The other thing that I often see is actually also the transient is playing a bit around. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just introduce a delay to transient. This is really cool. And one other thing I'm thinking, like maybe I can emphasize somewhere with only transient. I'm not gonna overdo it, so I want I don't want to click on the background all the time, but somewhere.
I think now we have the cool background low end, but that is not enough. Then we need this kind of noises on the background to fill up the space a little bit. So I will try to the fun sounds like weird machine sounds or ambient sounds. They were quite nice for this type of tracks. So I'm gonna I'm going to start with a fan. Try to look if I can find the fan sound. Play around. Side chain it to the kick. To the sub. EQ around a little bit. Mix it. And then we are going to layer this one with a white noise, a very ambient white noise, I would say. So let's do that. I'm going to use pigments for this one because pigments has this kind of different options for the noise so that I can try different things. I'm going to go for the analog, turn down the volume of this guy so that I'm only hearing the noise. So I will start with just trying out different noise types here. I think this will work. I'm going to turn this off and go to the effects and I'm going to volume this down a little bit and then try to make it more stereo so that I can give this stereo feel even though it's only the white noise that is stereo. The other thing that I always hear is actually having different sidechain options on the white noise so that it feels a bit different. So I will start with just simple sidechain to the kick. Maybe we'll limit down a bit more. And then I'm going to bring LFO tool. You can do it manually by automating the gain. But for me, I will just use this one because it makes it a bit more easier. So I want to draw something a bit rising and a bit different. So let's do that. This gives really, really nice curve to the sound. The other thing that I have to be really careful though is my stereo image now because this is a noise that covers all the frequency range what i'm going to use i'm just going to bring out my ozone imager this one is basically free you can download it free so the idea is i'm going to control the different frequencies and try to mono make mono some parts and stereo others and then up to thousand hertz i can consider depending on how it looks on the polar sample I think now we have a very authentic uh, low end. However, still not enough. There was kind of a zipper noise in the reference track. I would like to make that, that one as well. So zipper sounds or that type of resonance sound is made by uh, filter sweeping the voice. New preset. And I'm going to go again for my analog. Turn this off. Sorry. Volume this down and then volume this up. Gonna give that envelope to the filter. Resonated quite a bit. We are getting there, but I'm going to do the play with the noise a bit, see where it sounds a bit more zippery. I think we can also use the same technique. Envelope two goes to the type of the noise so that we can move the noise type very fast. <laughs> I 
I'm gonna distort this a bit as well. Here we, here we go. We definitely have our zipper. And then I'm gonna EQ it out so that it fits the track a bit more. Together with the track. Mix it. Really, really cool. What I'm going to do now, go back to the reference track, listen it one more time and tweak a bit more and make it a bit closer to the original. And we can then after go one by one and I'm going to show you the exact parameters that I used for each part so that you can actually see exactly what's going on. So let's do that. And yeah, that's it. That was the low end. Again, as I'm going really into the detail on each element, this will take really long time. If I try to make everything in one video, I will try to separate into the different parts so that we can do this for other parts as well. And we can close this once for all. And this was the low end. The next one will be the high end and percussions. But if you like the video and if you like the new editing and the new concept, let me know drop your comments below, give a like to the video. And other than that, I will catch you in the next one. Goodbye.